In this show, bad news about the next iMac. I'm Mike Dave, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, we- leaks and rumours every weekday at 1300 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. And on the subject of every weekday at 1300 UTC, where was yesterday's video? Well, you're going to see most of it today, um, but my microphone decided to be really weird for the first chunk of it. Don't know why, but I was also at the house for like 16 hours yesterday working, so... Um, Sorry. But let's do the news now and we'll get into yesterday's iCave answers. Ross Displayman has a couple of days ago now revealed that the industry sources he works with don't expect the display shipments for the iMac Big to happen until around June, pointing to an August or September event according to a follow-up tweet. Not only this, but Ross also expects the iMac to have a mini LED display, though it will have fewer dimming zones than the iPad Pro or MacBook Pro's 10,000 LEDs, giving 2,500 dimming zones, which on a bigger display will give a pretty hefty lighting kind of aura, I guess. However, that being said, the Pro Display XDR only has 512 dimming zones, so maybe it'll be fine. No one's really complained about the Pro Display XDR's blooming as far as I know. So it may well be that, as we suspected, part of the reason that the uh, MacBook Pro uh, was delayed was actually because they were resolving this blooming issue in terms of the filtering that goes between those mini LEDs and the display itself. And maybe they've been able to resolve it to the point where they just don't need as many dimming zones. Who knows, or maybe it is actually a manufacturing limitation. We will see. Now, into your iCave answers. James Apple asks, do you buy the notion that Apple would want to buy Peloton for adding more to the Fitness Plus content with Johnny Law, US government, having them under the telescope in terms of watching their moves and already making laws that allow side loading and not having great acquisition power like in years prior? And honestly, I'm not sure that Apple would want Peloton in the first place. Uh, Peloton basically bought exercise bikes stuck on a bit of tech that allowed it to have a a video feed and kind of track some of your vitals and and that was kind of it whereas Apple could quite easily buy the same bikes from the people that actually make them Peloton didn't make anything um, if that's what they wanted to do but I don't think Apple needs to I think Apple Fitness is building out quite nicely as it is Um, I'm not sure that they would want to or need to because even if they did I don't see Apple kind of taking all of the content that's been made by Peloton and mixing that in with their own stuff with Apple Fitness because everyone will be saying Peloton on it and that just doesn't seem like the sort of thing that Apple would do. In in terms of the legal stuff, uh, I don't think that we're going to see side loading coming to uh, the iPhones, at least not anytime soon. I think there will be uh, that kind of balance because at the moment, the White House and a lot of the kind of US government uses iPhones as their secure handsets too so it seems unlikely that they would then force apple to allow other stuff on there that could make that an issue and in terms of acquisitions uh, the only thing they would be barred from is acquiring stuff that would make them a bit of a monopoly in whatever area it is so tech companies in general would be uh, more difficult for them uh, if it was like a big kind of salesy tech company however something in a fitness space they're still nowhere near as big as some other companies in that space so probably wouldn't be a problem. Next up, James Apple asks, what happened to the Dylan DKT? Seems like deja vu of Apple shutting down leakers if they're not a John Prosser, John Mark Gurman, or Guoming Chi type of leaker. I mean, Apple definitely wants to stop leaks, but it turns out that Dylan DKT had actually just left Twitter because he was kind of experimenting with Twitter. It was the thing where he wanted to um, do some practice because he was interested in becoming a full-on analyst. He's studying uh, computer engineering, I think it is, at university or college, because he's probably American, um, and was trying to just slip away without anyone noticing, and then people made fake accounts for him, and the whole Apple uh, Twitter sphere kind of blew up because he was gone, so he came back and said, look, sorry guys, nothing nothing crazy's happened, I've, I've just left because I'm bored now, and that's fine, but it means we're going to be a little bit short of news again, so... That's kind of dull. Anthony McIntosh asks, IK Vances, hi Dave, I'm speculating that Apple puts their previous year's processors in other products. That probably means that sometimes they will have leftovers from the iPhone sales. I think it would be cool if they launched a portable gaming console with some of those leftover chips. I imagine it being a high quality switch alternative with a high quality haptics and rumble, great battery life and a nice enough screen for gaming. The body could be made from recycled materials to keep the costs down and it would run Apple Arcade games in their highest fidelity in the realm of portables. 
I think if the Switch has taught us anything, it's that people really like gaming on the go. Would love to hear your thoughts, even if it's unlikely. Greetings from Jamaica. And that's some great thoughts. Uh, I don't think that Apple is kind of just throwing stuff that's left over into play, uh, into other devices, but using chips that they already have the capacity to build to order. Uh, I think pretty much every chip that Apple manufactures for iPhones go into iPhones. All of that being said, uh, in terms of a handheld gaming console, we kind of have that already. It's called an iPad. Um, I know the only thing that's kind of missing is physical switches, so surely it would make a lot more sense for Apple to just create uh, like Joy-Cons, I think that's what they're called for the Switch, not a big gamer, but um, the Joypad parts that go on the side of something, the iPad is like beautifully thin, absolutely has enough uh, performance to do that kind of gaming, plenty of battery life, you know, it's, it's a really good thing, it's got a great display already. All of those uh, boxes that you were asking for are ticked, uh, even the chassis is made of recycled aluminium, so I think Apple already has its kind of gaming device for that sort of thing, which is the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, and then if you want to go any further than that, there's plenty of options uh, in the kind of more specific gaming side of things. Uh, but I think it makes more sense for Apple's devices to be multi-purpose and not specialised to gaming. That would be like creating a Mac that is purely for video editing and you're not allowed to do anything else on it. Like if you need to edit a Word document, you need to go and get a different Mac. I just don't see Apple needing to do that. And Team Kinetics, I gave answers. Any suggestions on backup drives? I have a six terabyte USB 2 drive, which I use for physical backups, but it's super slow these days. High capacity SSDs are still expensive. Speed isn't of huge importance for this task as it's rarely accessed. Perhaps a NAS would be a better option. And on this side of things, it depends how much you're backing up, what you're backing it up for, where, how often you're going to need to access it. As you say, you're not accessing that often, uh, so I'm guessing you also don't need to have access to it when you're out and about. I mean, for me, I also have a 6 terabyte spinny hard drive that lives under the desk. Um, it's called the big boy, just just saying and that's where I kind of dump all my files onto once I'm done with them as kind of a backup archive. Now. I don't know if you guys watch uh, Linus Tech Tips, but he's just lost a whole bunch of data from his big old servers that they all edit off of that are running like multiple RAID arrays in each one. Um, but he made a very good point, which is this is a nice to have backup uh, and not a must have backup because all of the videos that he's saved on there from the past 12 years or whatever it is of running his channel, the videos are also on YouTube. They're not in as good a quality on YouTube if he was to download them, but he can get access to them in a pinch. So that's why he doesn't have the extra layers of backup there. And when he lost some data, it didn't matter that much. However, uh, for a lot of people, um, your data is very, very important. And like if it's for running a business, then it's definitely uh, mission critical. Now, what I would say is take the hit and get a couple of uh, SSDs. Also, the spinning drives are not a bad option, even if it's something that you just leave overnight to run backups, uh, if that's what you need to do. But a couple of those, uh, I think they're about £100 for a six terabyte these days. It's really quite cost effective. So having just a pair of those might not be a bad idea, as long as you've got a way for that backup to happen when you're not physically there. In terms of a NAS, it's more for as I understand it, if you're going to be working off those files regularly, um, because it's more of like a localized server, but it might work for you. Um, anyone that knows a lot more about these backup and storage solutions, hit us up down in the comments and let us know where we should be looking. So thank you for watching this weirdly cobbled together uh, mess of an episode. Um, the Cupertino mugs have arrived. It's pretty cool. I think you'll agree. Um, thank you to the Patreons over there or over there. I can't remember which way around it is because this camera mirrors me.